okay what is noise in a network model neural network or deep learning a machine learning which is called a noise in a network error okay so when you want when you want uh, your model to pr produce some output it is producing with some extraneous data it is not giving with the fullest accuracy then we say that there is some noise so you take a picture and the picture is not very clear picture is not very clear we say that there is a noise you uh, listen a conversation the conversation is not very clear some disturbance is there that we say it is a noise so normally noise now we think that it is only a sound it is not like that noise can be of any error which will uh, uh, you know reduce the accuracy of anything you expect some better output but the accuracy level will go down due to the noise so under that only we will be studying or to reduce the noise or, or to reduce to the noisy level only we go with various techniques as regularization normalization all those things okay so what is the noise robustness so uh, avoiding the noise or reducing we cannot totally stop it we can just reduce the noise in the uh, image or the text image when we make it is image it may be a object detection or image classification image recognition video processing it may be of anything in the same way when we consider speech or the text it may be a text recognition so you just um talk something and your system has to recognize what you are talking about sometimes you don't use the uh, proper accent what the system is expecting but still it will be able to recognize since the noise robustness is uh, incorporated over there the, it is able to reduce the noise and able to recognize what i am speaking it is able to understand and respond when we consider our alexa and all so each one will be talking with a different modulation i will be talking in one way and somebody else will be talking in some other way it is able to understand the natural language it is able to understand the natural language it processes it and then responds it okay fine so for uh, better accuracy to avoid noise level only we go with various uh, balancing method various techniques in which regularization plays very very important role so what regularization does it is avoiding or balancing between your underfitting and overfitting so when you give a training to your uh, model it may go to overfitting you give uh, you know prop, uh, with a lot of data set you are giving training to your model but still when there is a slight variation on the input it will not be able to recognize that is where it goes with the overfitting that is beyond the level you give a training to your model expecting that it will be able to produce everything okay see so you train a kid with some 100 or 1000 words when slightly the pronunciation varies the baby will not be able to understand what you are trying to say okay so you show uh, lots of colors to a baby that is uh, properly you are training a baby but when there is a mixture of two colors it will not be able to identify what it is you are showing 100 or thousands of flags to the baby so everything is very well trained but when there is a slight changes in it like the shape is changed or the way you are projecting it like you would have shown it in the rectangle manner when you are showing it will be shown like within a round shape the same flag is being projected but it will not be able to understand it is you get my point so overfitting you train your model with a large number of huge number of data sets even then the accuracy will go down due to over fitting similarly under fitting the enough training is not given due to which it is not able to recognize what it is supposed to okay so to balance that only we go with the regularization so what you need to understand here is to enhance robustness noise robustness we are using various <coughs> techniques as regularization number 2 normalization so this we would have learned as batch normalization mainly these two things only we will be using 
So again, let me come to this regularization. What are all the techniques we saw? What are all the techniques? L1 regularization, L2 regularization, dropout. We have something called bagging and early stopping. Early stopping. So for this, I just gave you what it is. So I just would like to explain more about what is bagging and what is early stopping. So these two things based on the mathematical computation we will be doing a slight variation only here. For everything the loss will be considered. How do we regularize? We just check the loss. Accordingly only we come to know that accuracy is less and then we try to regularize the system. We try to balance the system. Okay. So L1 takes the absolute value of so and so the computation and then performs the calculation. Whereas uh, your L2 regularization rather than taking absolute value, it squares that value and then performs the computation. Only that is the difference between both of them. Both are uh, very very basic regularization techniques. Then we saw about dropout technique where your neural you identify it is overfitting or it is going to leave underfitting. So you try to uh, disable <coughs> the of the nodes. Okay. So you give plus training. Later you analyze, you find out the loss and then you identify some nodes are functioning in extraneous manner and then you go and disable few of the nodes. So this will be like on and off situation. Okay, sometimes you need to disable, later you need to enable. So, accordingly the network also will be changed. You get my point, same network, same model you design, later you put off few of the nodes. So, it is not completely destroyed, you only disable few of the nodes. Such a way we achieve dropout technique to regularize the <coughs> neural network's model. Okay, so next comes to early stopping and bagging. These two are uh, having little difference uh, between the, uh, I mean, uh, from the other methods. So, early stopping, take down what is that and let's see with an example. Early stopping is a regularization uh, technique used to prevent overfitting. Early stopping also to prevent overfitting. So whenever it is underfitting, it is understood that the training is less. You need to train your model with more number of data sets. Okay? You need to add few things into that. Whenever it is overfitting only you have done, later you have to update your model. Okay? That is why we focus more on overfitting, not on underfitting. You get me point? So your early stopping is also used to prevent overfitting in machine learning as well as deep learning. So by the name itself you can understand, we just keep monitoring the uh, training of your model. Okay. So the moment you see that some degradation is taken place. Okay. So you train your model and you test your model with the uh, training data itself. With the training data itself, please imagine whenever I say test with your training data, you just train your model with some 100 images or 100 text or 100 data set. Okay, so out of those 100 itself, you will be uh, showing one of the image. I saw some 10 problems in the classroom, same problem, I asked you to solve it again. That is, taking a data from the trained data itself. Sometimes, I solve some 10 problems, later I give you a problem which is a uh, little different from the one which I have shown you. Some changes I make it on the data set and I ask you to solve the problem. You get my point? So the testing can be done with the trained data. Testing can be done with the different data. It may not be totally a deviation. Maybe a slight variation on the new data. However it may be. So you are training. When you are giving the training itself, you keep on checking the uh, profit or the outcome of your uh, network also. Output also will be checked. Whenever you find for one data set there is some degradation, you feel that some loss is occurring, immediately you can stop it, stop the training. You get my point? So, when you are giving the training itself, there must be a monitor who has to monitor the entire
entire network model when it finds out there is a degradation immediately stop training the model which we call it as early stopping rather than uh, like I am assigned a task that I have to complete 100 iterations but I have got the output in the 50th iteration itself but simply I am uh, kept on doing it right so I have achieved what I wanted even after that I proceed the same becomes overfitting so beyond the threshold beyond my uh, condition again if you are giving me overload obviously my effectiveness will go down you are capable of writing exam for only maximum of 3 hours if you are asked to write for 4 hours or 5 hours we will be exhausted ok when it crosses 3 hours itself we will be exhausted obviously our efficiency level will go down and the way of uh, thinking and the writing speed everything will go down the efficiency will be degraded this is uh, our human example in the same way when the network model produces the output which is little lesser than what is the spectrum where it is a stop rather than complete and then adjust all those things that we call it as early stopping ok so example take down one example so hope you have understood what is early stopping monitor the training of the network model whenever you find any degradation as as you know as long as it is able to produce better output there is no loss there is no much loss definitely there will be a loss but it should not be too much ok so when it is uh, close by that it is fine when it goes beyond that you have to stop it that is called early stopping example training a neural network for image classification training a neural network for image classification so here I will uh, explain you the scenario how it will be so I have decided to train my model with some 100 data set out of 100 data set what I am going to do uh, some 80 data set is to train my model and 20 data set is for validating the model validating the model which means that the data set will be monitoring the training monitoring the training I said there will be a monitor who will be monitoring the training of the network model so here who will be monitoring among the 100 8 will be the data to be trained and 80, 20 will be for the validation purpose. They will be continuously monitoring the data which is being trained. Anywhere it, it finds there is a loss, there is a deviation, there is some degradation, immediately it will give a signal that yes, it is enough, we can stop training it. So that before 80 itself, some, uh, when we cross 50 or 55 itself, it is giving me alarm that the training is sufficient. I have planned to train with 80 but my validation set is saying me that 50 and 55 are sufficient so I will stop it there itself so that I can avoid, I can provide overfitting. It's clear? So this I have taken an image classification. So image classification means you uh, feed 100 of images <coughs> so that you want to identify the image which comes under vehicle, which comes under fruits or vegetables or which comes under some animals, insects. So I, I have some problem with that. Based on that I I classify the images what is being trained over there. Okay. So this can be uh, utilized for your image classification, object detection, image processing. So image classification is that just group the images. Simple. Object detection means suppose you imagine uh, Autonomous vehicle, autonomous car which is on the road, it has to detect the object. It may be a pedestrian or it may be other vehicle or it may be some other animal or it may be something which will be able to cross so fast. So we don't have to worry about that. It has to detect what object it is. Accordingly, it will have a control on its own. Okay. So for that, if it is given over training, over time, so it will not be able to act accordingly. You are fully dumb. You are not at all allowed to think on your own. Then we will not be able to do anything on our own. That is the reason we always say, rather than giving you the 100 percentage of the input to you, if we are giving only some 70 percentage of the input like 
Imagine I am giving you notes for all the topic. What will you do? You will only rely on my notes. Correct? Beyond that you will not be able to read it. You, will, you won't read at all. So suppose you get a question which is slightly uh, variating requested question or indirect question is asked from the topic. You will not be able to answer. Suppose we are giving you only the guidelines. We are giving lecture only on uh, the important things where it needs to be highlighted. The rest of the things you need to do on your own. Okay, I teach something and I ask you to refer for the application. Suppose if some application is given in the examination and they are asking about that application, you will be able to think on your own and then do. Because I have not overtrained you. I am, you are not facing an overfitting problem. So always overfitting should be prevented to get the better accuracy of any model. Clear? So, yeah. Next comes to bagging. So, bagging, the full form of bagging is that boot, bootstrap, bootstrap, aggregating. Bootstrap, aggregating, the full form of bagging. Take down this also. Bagging is a technique used to reduce variance, <coughs> used to reduce variance and prevent overfitting and prevent overfitting in machine learning as well as deep learning models by combining Machine learning as well as deep learning models by combining the predictions of predictions of multiple models predictions of multiple models trained on trained on different subsets of the training data different subsets of the training data. Yes, you have written bagging is a technique used to reduce variance and prevent overfitting. So we just find out the difference between various subsets. So here what do we do? Please try to understand the process alone. So you have a hundred of data set that I divided into number of subsets. Let us assume it is some five subsets. I make it as a five subsets. I train each subset separately subset separately so that on each subset itself I come to know uh, whether it is going to lead overfitting or underfitting ok and then all the subsets training will be aggregated or I find out the average ok so parallelly all the five can be I train each subset independently parallelly and I take the average of all the five subsets performance or any loss. You get my point? So the previous one is that I just train, I divide the data set a batch for the training, other batch for the validation. So the validation will be monitoring it. So that 20 data will be a monitor of these 80 data. But here all the data will be trained. I don't avoid anything over here. Because in the previous case there may be a problem that due to this validating data is not being trained to the model. Again, I may lose some features into that. That is the reason I divide the entire data set into number of subsets and then I train each subset separately, independently, parallelly and I take the performance of all of them, find the average and that will be the final, uh, you know, variance for me. How much I need to train. That will educate me what must be the training should be given or where I should stop. Right? So, the, uh, normally this bagging and all will not be uh, in use too much. For uh, almost all the regular, uh, all the models we will be using L1, L2 regularization dropout is a very very effective method of using and this even uh, 
or its topic also will be used. Bagging, bag, the problem is very very complicated, very involved in large number of uh, hidden layers, we will go with that. The data set, you know, uh, you need to divide and you have to maintain all those things, it will be a little complicated task. Okay, so yes, we have, I think, covered all the things. The now comes to, yeah, uh, please note down a few applications of regularization. Applications of regularization that are phase, biometrics for phase. Okay, so it has to recognize my phase properly, only then I will be, give, I will be given attendance. Suppose by mistake, for me the attendance is not taken or uh, I am recognized as some other person, so I will be losing attendance or somebody else will be getting the attendance. Such problem should not happen. So this is just attendance only where there is some uh, criminal issues, some accidents happen on the road. There and all if it is not uh, recognizing the image properly, it is not able to classify and recognize the image properly, it will be a very very serious issue. So there the regularization is very much important. We will be thinking that yes I have given enough training but since it is not able to uh, classify it properly, it is not able to provide me the oxygen. For example, I have given all the pick of very very clarity pick. I fed so many pictures which are all very very uh, you know brighter, very clarity uh, pictures. Whereas when I am uh, testing any image or I am feeding the data which needs to be tested, it is of very uh, low quality image, low clarity image. If it is not able to compare and uh, uh, you know match and give me the result, of course I will be losing something and the entire model is facing the failure. Because when I am feeding the thing, yes it is possible. When I am testing it, whatever the data I get it from my surrounding only I will be able to feed. Okay, imagine uh, we have a CCTV. Okay, so we suspect that some stranger came inside uh, the premises. Okay, so that I wanted to check the my system knows all the faces which are part of our uh, premises. So to make sure that the one who came inside is a stranger, it must be able to check it properly. Since the clarity of the new picture is not going matching with the uh, fed pictures, it is not able to produce a proper output. I will be losing something because I do check it for the security purpose. It is not able to produce, it is giving me some wrong error or it is comparing with someone who is already existing and saying that this is what is that face. I may carelessly leave that matter also. I may not be cautious. So, yaro orther gulla varadhe teri idu. So, adha naamu vandhe karakta check pannama. My system saying that yes, this person belongs to this premises only. So, na I will just leave. Later, when some bad incident happens, then I will once again check. I will do a lot of processing to that. Adhe kapro when I come to know that person is a stranger. That is the number problem. Because for what purpose we are introducing this system that doesn't serve its purpose. Clear? So overfitting and underfitting must be avoided because our uh, neural network is exclusively used for replacement of the human. Okay, what we are supposed to do, it has to do. Similarly, uh, through voice I want to unlock something. I want to unlock something, so I slightly uh, change my modulation of talking or my voice and ask if it is so it is an automatic door, okay, I am giving an instruction to my door, open the door, okay, it is recognizing things that it is of my voice for somebody else, it is opening the door, I know security over here. So there the text recognition goes straight because the training might be of overfitting or underfitting. Clear? Yeah, applications could be image classification, natural language processing, speech recognition, medical imaging, medical imaging, autonomous vehicles, financial forecasting. So by now you have idea about image classification, okay? NLP again, natural language processing also, when I am giving 
uh, only uh, the same kind of or exact uh, exact accent I have recorded everything. I have fed the data to my system. I got a told my voice is completely out. So when I am giving some instruction, if my system is not able to recognize my voice, it will be a problem. Okay. So I have to open the door only then all other uh, functions will be taken place. But the instruction must be given by me only. But it is not able to recognize my voice. Because it is taking only accurate, I mean uh, my regular voice only. It is not able to identify there is a slight change in it. It is not able to reduce the noise and recognize it. It will be a problem. Okay. Similarly, medical imaging, you go with some MRI scanning and all. So again, in MRI, uh, mainly we all know that neural networks uh, and uh, yeah, a deep learning uh, plays very important role in medical domain. Because various diseases needs to be diagnosed at the early stage itself. Earlier and all, even the cancer uh, was uh, diagnosed only at the end. Early stage, we could not diagnose and we could not treat. But now it is not the case. Okay. So many cases we are hearing that early stage itself, they are diagnosed and they treated very well, they are fine. Okay. So this is possible with our neural networks deep learning techniques. So when it is able to find out properly the overfitting and it is able to regularize that, the diagnosis will be very very uh, perfect, accurate. Okay. So yeah, regularization is very important for uh, medical imaging, not only with any disease identification or uh, scanning or CT scan, whatever it may be, the thing we are taking, the reading must be given properly and that must be read by the system properly so that that will be given to the next domain for the treatment, okay. And it is going to read, uh, again it is all connected via your IOT, okay. Your IOT also plays very important role in medical domain because we do even uh, use wearable devices and so many devices which will be monitoring the patient and that data will be supplied to the doctor who will be somewhere else, who may not be even in the country, who may be somewhere else across the world and the data will be uh, taken here from the patient and will be given over there. If that is not read properly, if that not uh, read, I mean uh, not recognized properly, it will be a problem. Okay, so for all these things, Regularization is very important because we need to avoid overfitting. And finally comes to financial forecasting. Again, financial finance is also another important domain where uh, our uh, NNBL is playing important role. That is mainly stock prediction, <coughs> stocking. Okay, so how uh, the share market is going to be for the next one week, for the next one year. So based on that, the people will be investing. So for the uh, investment part, people will be more uh, relying on uh, stocking. So there it is very really important role where the overfitting should be avoided and that is where regularization is used. I hope I have covered thing and uh, about batch normalization which we discussed in the last class only. So batch normalization is another method of uh, preventing the overfitting. The main difference between regularization and batch normalization is that anybody can tell me what is the difference between regularization and normalization. Anybody? I think we have spent two hours on it. What is the difference between regularization on a deep neural network and batch normalization? No idea. Hmm? Okay. So regularization is done on the trained data. On the trained data, once you train your model, then you find out the loss. It is all depending on the loss. Loss based on the loss only any of the techniques are applied. Okay, whether it is L1, L2, uh, dropout, everything is based on the loss. We make some modification after uh, completing establishing the network after giving.
in the perfect training you are adjusting your network but again early stopping or back even all those things are after the training only whereas batch normalization will determine before you could give the training to the model itself how much training must be given to that you plan to give x and you find out the normalized data and that data will be given as a input to your model get my point so after giving the training if you adjust your network it is called regularization before training the model if you decide what training must be given how much data must be fed to the model for that batch normalization helps clear so i believe with this uh, i have completed all the topic there is one more dc dimension there is nothing in that simple mathematical uh, part only you want to just leave it